Today we're gonna learn how to make our lobster butternut squash risotto. What you'd like to do is start with a heavy bottom pan. Get your heat on medium high. You wanna get that pan a little bit toasty. I start with just a touch of olive oil in the pan, spread it around, and you get your aborio rice. Get it in one nice even layer. You really wanna toast this rice a little bit before you get started. What that's gonna do is release the natural starch inside of the rice, and it's gonna allow you to bind your risotto, give it that nice creamy texture that chef's always looking for. And that's starting to toast up already. You can almost smell it. And as that happens, I'm gonna move over and grab some of our Brunois shallot. Brunois is just a fancy word for a small dice. So we're gonna add that. And you're gonna hear the liquid from the shallot hit the pan. We call it sweat out the shallots. So what you wanna do is just release some of that natural moisture coming out of that small onion. And you'll start to hear the sizzle straight away. So next I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white wine. You can hear how hot the pan is there, yeah? It's very important that you cook that alcohol off. You don't wanna ruin your risotto on your third step by not cooking off the alcohol. So once that cooks off, we're gonna start feeding it chicken stock. If you're a vegetarian, maybe you wanna make a vegetable stock. One of the reasons this dish gives the chef so much trouble is you can't walk away from it. You gotta keep the rice moving all the time. You're gonna allow the rice to cook out and continue to absorb that moisture in small doses. So you don't wanna drown the rice with too much moisture or else you're just boiling it off. What you wanna do is feed it very gently, about two ounces every minute or so for the next 20 minutes. So you can see that the rice is starting to blow out a little bit. And now we're gonna to start to flavor it. So we're gonna start with our squash puree. You wanna really just give that some time. Incorporate it through the whole rice. So as soon as you get that butternut squash, kind of melt it out in the pan. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Once the squash is all incorporated into the rice, I'm gonna add a little bit of Parmesan. That'll not only give it a little burst of flavor, but the fat from the cheese will also help to bind that rice together. So you get a nice creamy product. So the parm, once that starts to melt down, I'm gonna take my lobster tail and I'm gonna poach it in some Bermonte. And we wanna just keep it super gentle on the poach on the tail. It's such a delicate, sweet piece of meat. You don't wanna burn it. So it's just gonna sit in that butter. And if you time it correctly, this is going to be finished by the time I put my diced squash into the mix. So after I get that Parmesan and the purees in there, I'm gonna add a little bit of the knuckle and the claw meat. So what's nice is that you can use the whole lobster that way. You poach off a whole lobster, you take the tail as your showpiece, but you use the claw and the knuckle to help fill out this dish. So I'm gonna add the diced squash and fold that in. It only needs time to come up to heat. I'm gonna finish with some finely sliced chives. We're gonna put it right here in the center of the plate. We're gonna finish with our butter poached lobster tail, classic squash accompaniment, some fried sage. And here you have one of the most classic dishes in Hell's Kitchen, our lobster butternut squash risotto. Delicious. Hey guys, if this video made you hungry, we have more recipes on our YouTube channel. Check it out, click subscribe, and get cooking.